I'm David Zuckerman, Lieutenant Governor of Vermont, and we're here doing another one of our series and our videos about issues related to COVID-19 in Vermont. Today, I have Martha Abbott with me. She's the co-owner of the Independent Tax Service Company in Burlington. Uh, she's also on my campaign team, uh, and she's a tax preparer, so knows a lot about what's going on with the Federal CARES Act, the Coronavirus and Relief Economic Security uh, legislation that just came out of Washington. Uh, we're going to be talking about some of the recent stimulus uh, pieces in that package and specifically the checks that are going to go out to all Americans. So um, thank you, Martha, for joining me today. Hi, David. Thanks for doing this. I'm happy to help get some information out to folks. And just to give some broader context for everybody, the federal government passed this legislation. You may have heard about it, and it directs the Treasury to send out checks to most Americans, not quite all, not the wealthiest Americans, but basically uh, just about everybody else. So um, Martha, maybe first, can you run through who exactly is gonna qualify for the payments and maybe who doesn't and how much these checks are gonna be for? Adults with annual incomes up to $75,000 or married couples with incomes up to 150,000 will qualify for a full $1,200 check for each adult, which would be $2,400 for a married couple. Uh, people will also get an additional $500 for each child who is listed on their tax return. And then if people make more money than that, adults making from $75,000 to $99,000 will also get a stimulus check, but it will be for a reduced amount. They are going to uh, lower by $5 the amount you, of stimulus you get for every $100 of income above the $75,000 or above the $199,000. How is the IRS going to calculate your income in order to determine the amount of your stimulus check? So, you know, what advice would you give as a taxpayer for Vermonters who are trying to take these checks into consideration right now? Anyone who has already filed a 2019 federal tax return they will base the income on that tax return. In other words, they will see what your income was in 2019, according to those guidelines that I was just describing, and that's how they will decide who gets the checks. If you have not filed a 2019 return, but you did file a 2018 tax return, they will look at the 2018 return instead. So, I would say that um, if you have filed a 2018 return and it's similar or not, you know, over way, way over the limit, um, I would say you don't need to worry about filing your 2019 return yet for this stimulus check. The filing deadlines have been moved so that you're not required to file this year until July 15th. So if you have, you know, too much going on right now and you can't get it together to file for 2019, you should still be able to get a check, the stimulus check. But if your income in 2019 was uh, quite a bit lower than 18, or if 18 you were kind of over, you might want to try to get it in soon so that you would get the full check now? Or will this be, is this going to get squared up at some point later when you do file your 19? Will you be eligible to get some of the money if you don't get it right away? I have not heard anything about this being squared up. And I really tend to think that they're just going to do this stimulus check out to people based on whichever tax return they look at. And I don't think it's, you're going to have to square it up. So if there's a big difference between 18 and 19 and and you're deciding whether to file 19 yet you might want to take that into consideration what about folks who are on social security are they going to get these checks as well i believe everybody who is on social security whose income is under these thresholds will get a check even if they have not had to file a tax return in either 2018 or 2019 there's been a little bit of confusion about this. I believe the IRS is now saying you don't need to file a return if you haven't, if you're not otherwise required to file. As long as you're getting Social Security, you will receive a stimulus payment and it will uh, arrive at the same direct deposit 
bank account that your social security currently is, is arrives in. In other words, if you get social security now, you get it via direct deposit to your bank account. That's how everybody gets their social security currently. That is the same way you will get your stimulus of $1,200 or $2,400. So you'll get it electronically if they already have a means of communicating with you financially electronically. And if you, they don't have that, they'll mail you a check. And that is that going to take a little bit longer? I'm imagining the checks are going to take a little bit longer. And in fact, there's, the IRS is saying that pretty soon they're going to put a portal on their website if they don't have your direct deposit information yet and you want to give it to them, you can use that portal. And that probably will be faster than waiting for a check. Normally the check only takes about three days longer because of the mail. But I think in this instance, this is such a large undertaking by the government that it might take more than three days longer to get a check. Now, I've heard from some people there may be one sort of glitch or unfortunate loophole whereby if you um, earned too much money in 2018 or 2019, then your, your check would either be smaller or non-existent, depending how high income you were, and now you've lost your job, uh, you may still not get this check. You may be eligible for the unemployment additional money, but you won't be eligible for these stimulus checks. Is that accurate? Yes, but they are saying that once you file your 2020 tax return in 2021, if your 2020 tax return shows your income was within these limits, then you will get a check eventually. So there doesn't seem to be a means of saying, well, great, my income was high, but now I have no income in 2020, shouldn't I be getting a stimulus? And apparently there's no way to address that until you file your 2020 tax return, which you can't do until the end of 2020. But you could file unemployment and you'd get whatever the state unemployment is, plus the federal, I think it's $600, at least for the next 12 weeks. Is that yeah. accurate? Yes, that's my understanding. I also understand there are loans that, that, that will be turned into grants that people who have lost their ability to conduct business because they're a hairdresser or somebody who is in a business that has been closed down, um, that you can apply for these loans that will become grants of up to $10,000 for each business. And they're available through the Small Business Administration. There's an application process. And you can go to www.sba.gov backslash page backslash disaster loan applications. And right there, you can apply for these. And I don't really know what the loan application involves, but it sounds like it's worth uh, giving it a try if you're a sole proprietor or any sort of business entity that really has been affected by the virus and is not able to conduct business. Finally, the tax deadline this year, I think you said earlier, has been extended uh, maybe some point in July. You can clarify that. Uh, and that's because of the coronavirus. There are opportunities for small businesses, as you just mentioned. Um, can you speak a little bit to that uh, extension? The deadline has been extended to July 15th. And any other deadline that was April 15th has also been extended to July 15th. For example, your, your first estimated quarterly payments for 2020 were due April 15th. Though that's been extended to July 15th. The ability to contribute money to an IRA or other retirement vehicle, which you normally have to do for last year, for 2019, by April 15th, that's now extended to July 15th. Also, putting money into your health savings account is extended to July 15th. So a lot of virtually anything that was due that has to do with your income tax that was due April 15th it's now July 15th. So people don't have to file an extension. This is automatic? Yes, you don't have to file an extension. They've just moved the deadline. And it's also the deadline to pay, more importantly. You don't have to pay until July 15th either. But if you're getting a return, you can still file anytime. 
so that you can get that sooner than later. You don't have to wait, do you? Right. If you're getting a refund, you should file as soon as possible. Well, everybody, thank you for joining me on this uh, podcast in our uh, series on uh, different information for folks during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, Martha, thank you. And to our viewers, uh, if you do want any more information on COVID-19 here in Vermont, we recommend folks go to the Department of Health website at healthvermont.gov. Uh, you can also visit my website, Zuckerman4VT.com, for other COVID-19 resources. And, uh, and any questions you have, you can send us and we'll try to get you some answers. I am Lieutenant Governor uh, David Zuckerman. This is one of my many conversations uh, that I'll be having with experts about Vermont during this coronavirus pandemic and how we can all make it through these challenging times together. Uh, Martha, thank you so much for joining me.